see because then it does that little spinny thing and then I don't know hello everybody welcome to Sunday school I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now and if you didn't hear it because it's still spinning I'm sorry but now it says it's good now it's there okay we're good all right good morning everybody welcome to Sunday school today on August 30th I have to tell you that there are two birthdays today in our Sunday school family. Lexi's dad and Carol and Elsie's mom both have their birthdays today. Today is a very special day, I guess. So happy birthday to Katie and happy birthday to Scott. I hope they both have wonderful, wonderful days with their families. Of course, he's with our family. I don't know how wonderful that'll be. We'll do our best. So, yes, so two birthdays today. How exciting. It just popped in my head today. All right. I hope everybody got their packets in the mail. Lexi got hers, so I know that the Munster kids got theirs. I am hoping that everybody got their Sunday school packets because there's lots of fun stuff in there for um, this weekend uh, for worship and for Sunday school. So I hope you have everything. If for some reason you did not get your packet, please have your mom and dad or your grandma and grandpa or an adult email me and I will happily drop one off. Um, so you can do all of the activities that are in the packet. Okay? All right. Hi, Shannon. How are you today? Are you good today? Shannon looks fabulous today. It's really hot in here today. Are you warm? I'm warm. It's too hot. It's warm in here. All right. So let's get started. So I brought something to show you today. It's one of my favorite things. It's so cute. Look it. Do you know what that is? Shannon, what is this? A birthday invitation. A what? A birthday invitation. Yes, this is a birthday invitation. Last year, in October, Shannon turned 16. So we had a sweet 16 birthday party for her. And we sent invitations to all of our family and all of her friends and invited them to come and celebrate her birthday with her. And it was a lot of fun. There's lots of information that you see when you get a birthday invitation. It will tell you the day the party is, what time, who it's for, because of course you need to know who it's for, where the party's going to be, and then there's these four little letters in there. And if you look, let me see if I can do this. There it is. It says, oh, my finger. Oh, there we go. It says RSVP. Who knows what RSVP stands for? Shannon? Do you know what that stands for? Okay, so what does it represent? It's the way of RSVP means is respondez-vous s'il vous plaît. It's French. I just learned that today. Look at me learning sign language and French all at the same time. Yes, it means please respond and let the person know who's having the party if you can be there or not. So it's very important to, and there's a there was a date there, so they needed to call or text me and let me know if they could make Shannon's party. It's respond is, s'il vous plaît, something like that. S'il vous plaît is please. So it's please respond. That's just, you know, let us know. Okay, so... Have you ever gotten a birthday invitation or a party invitation from one of your friends? Have you? Was it exciting when you got invited? Yes, it is very exciting when you get, oh, ooh, there's going to be a party. I wonder if there's going to be cake. That's what I always think, because I like cake. But, you know, maybe you think, I wonder if there'll be treat bags, or I wonder if there'll be a clown. I don't like clowns. Or a bounce house, or I wonder what my friend wants for their birthday. There's lots of things that you think about when you get a birthday invitation. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Mrs. Schumacher. Yes. So, I have another question for you. Have you ever found out that somebody was having a party and you didn't get an invitation? Shannon? Mm -hmm. Has that happened to you? Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Were you sad? Were your feelings hurt a little bit? You know, sometimes, like, sometimes when people have a party and they don't invite everybody, that hurts people's feelings. And you think, well, why didn't they invite me? I thought we were friends. How come they didn't ask me to come to their party? And it makes you feel really crummy, doesn't it? Did you feel crummy? 
I have felt crummy. It's happened to me before, too. People have had parties and I wasn't invited. But that's okay. Because, because, because you have an invitation to something so cool that a birthday party that you didn't get invited to, that's okay. Because today's scriptures talk about the great invitation. Now, the great invitation, guess who that comes from, Shannon? Jesus. God. Comes from God. Yes. God invites us into his family. He has invited us to be his children and to get to know him and talk to him and be a part of his family. That is the coolest thing ever. And do you know how you RSVP? To God's invitation to be a part of his family? You don't know? I'm going to help her. Because I think all of you have already RSVP'd to God's invitation to his family. But if you have not, the key to RSVP or respondez-vous s'il vous plaît to God's invitation is by simply believing that Jesus died on the cross and took away all of your sins. Do you believe that, Shannon? Do you know that in your heart? Well, she believes that and knows that in her heart. So she's already RSVP'd and said, yes, God, I want to be a part of your family. I know that you sent Jesus to die on the cross to take my sins away. And I believe that. And I know that you love me unconditionally. And I know you would do anything for me. And you are always with me and you walk beside me every day. And I am forgiven of my sins because of Jesus. She knows that. I know that. You probably already know that. Most of you do anyways. So that tells me that you have responded to God's invitation to be a part of his family. Isn't that so cool? That's the best party in the world. It's forever. You can't ever be kicked out of God's party. Ah! You could dance and live life to the fullest following what God tells you to do. And you are always a part of God's family. You are the party. That's so cool. Now, did you know that there are some people that don't know about God's family? It's not that God has not invited them. It's just that they have forgotten to open their invitation. Can you believe that? I know. But there are some people that don't know about God. Or there's some people that don't believe in God. Or there's some people that don't think that anything God can do for them will help them. It's so sad. We have got to get people to open their invitations. Because their invitations are way cooler than this one. Of course, this one's pretty cool. But God's invitation is so much better. God's invitation invites you into a, a, a life with him forever. Oh, it's so exciting. So I thought I would send you something in your packets that you could help somebody open their invitation from God. So if you look in your packets, you have something like this. Now, yours doesn't have any color on it. I started to color mine. This is an invitation. On the back, it says you are invited into God's family. God loves you and you are his child. God wants you to know him. God wants you to know that Jesus died on the cross to take all your sins away and you can walk closely with God forever. Know this and believe this to be true. You are important to me and I wanted you to hear the good news. Love and there's no name down there. So this is, and over here you'll see our website for our church. This is a great invitation that you can give to somebody who may or may not really know who Jesus is. Or you wonder about that person. Maybe you think they know about Jesus or maybe you think they know about God, but you're not sure. So what you can do is, is you can first, you can color this picture however you want to color it. And I know some of the hands are really hard to color. You can make a rainbow over it. You can color it any way you want. I would use crayons or colored pencils because markers might bleed through. So you can color this invitation and then at the bottom, you can sign your name. And then on this side, you can either write, just write somebody's name and hand it to them. 
or you can ask an adult to help you with an address and they can write the address on and you can put a stamp up here in the corner and you can mail it to somebody. Maybe it's somebody, maybe it's a friend you go to school with. Maybe it's your teacher. Maybe it's somebody in your family that you don't know if they go to church and if they even know about Jesus. I don't know. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's somebody you see at the grocery store. Maybe it's the same cashier that you go to every time you go to Strike. I don't know. I'm leaving it up to you to figure out who needs this invitation. Who needs to know that they're invited into God's family and they just have to believe. I think it's exciting. I'm already getting ready to figure out who I'm going to send Mike to. I have a couple ideas. Morning, Maddie. Um, so I highly recommend that you try this and send it to somebody. You never know whose life you can change. Because remember, we are called by God, right? Jesus says, go and make disciples among all nations. That's us. That's our job. We're disciples. Got to step it up, Shannon. She's going to step it up. I'm going to give her one too. She can color it and then maybe give it to somebody that she knows and say, hey, I just wanted to give this to you today. That's being bold and living your faith out loud because that's what we do. And it's fun. It's fun to say, hey, I love Jesus. And if somebody says, well, that's dumb. Well, then you say, I'm going to pray for you. Yes, that's how you do it. It's just that simple. So I encourage you to color these and mail these and send these to people who you think might need it. Okay? Can you do that for me, Shannon? Can you do that for me? Okay. You want to finish coloring mine? Okay. I don't have any crayons with me, though. Maybe later. Okay. All right. So that's your job from our children's message today. That's your job. Your job is to color your invitation and find somebody to help them know Jesus better. Okay? I know you can do it. Happy birthday, Katie. Happy birthday, Scott. Elsie and Carol, I hope you get cake with your mom's birthday. And Dave, if they don't get cake, it'll be very sad. Hint, hint. All right, let's pray. Dear God, help us to invite people to RSVP to you. We want everyone to feel your love and hope and grace and mercy like we do. Thank you for loving us. Encourage us to send our invitations and help us to decide who really needs to receive it. In your name we pray, amen. Because, you know, if you pray and ask God, God, who do you think I should send this to? Who do you want me to send this to? The funny thing is, is a name will just poof, pop in your head. You'll be like, oh, that's where I should send it to. Isn't that great? God works like that. That's the Holy Spirit. He works through us. He'll talk to you. It's great. Happens to me all the time. In fact, I just have three names pop in my head. I'm going to have to make three invitations. All right. So before I forget, I need to remind you that next Sunday is our outdoor service, which means we won't have Sunday School Live. However, we will have our children's message during worship. So if you have not been able to make it to an outdoor service because it's been hot and sticky and gross, it's supposed to be really nice. And I have um, bags that you can uh, that I'll hand out to you that have coloring sheets in there and a little snack in there. So make sure that you put it on the calendar to be at church next Sunday at 10 a.m. Morning, Tony and Sophia. Glad you could make it with us this morning. Um, so make sure that you get up early, eat your breakfast, and be to church by 10 so that you can join me on the lawn sitting on our little cushions uh, to have our children's message together. <gasps> We get to be together. And those of you who haven't been able to make it, I really hope you can. Because I've missed seeing you. And I promise we'll keep our social distance and I'll just wait. Even though I really want to hug you, I know I can't. And that's okay. All right. So we are shifting gears to Animal Kingdom. Shannon, we're going to Animal Kingdom. You want to come with? Sure. All right. So today we are discussing the story of the parable of the lost son. Now, when you think of a lost son, what do you think of? Lost. Some, that's really all you got. Mm -hmm. When you think of somebody's lost, like they went out and nobody can find them, right? Well, in our story today, it's a little bit different. This boy is lost in a different way. He has forgotten 
where he came from and who he's supposed to be. He's just kind of running amok and just making a mess of his life. So let me tell you the story of the parable. So have you, now last week when we talked, we talked about going to the zoo. And what was the animal that we talked about when we were at the zoo last week? The lion, because we all love to run over to the lion's den and see if the lion will roar for us. So if you were at the, if you were at the zoo, what would, if you said, I want to see the messiest animal in the zoo, what animal would you think of? A pig. A pig. And why would you think of a pig? Because they roll around in mud. Because they roll around in mud. Now, it is a known fact that the pigs roll around in the mud, not to get dirty, but to cool themselves when it's a hot day. I should suggest that to Shane, because Shane's really hot right now down there in Louisiana. Maybe he should roll around in the mud. I'll text that to him later, see what he says. So, so that's what pigs do. They roll around, you think they got look all over their face, and they're when they eat. So they're kind of messy. So if you give a pig a bath, you can wash them up, right? But what's going to happen as soon as you put them back in the pig pen? He's going to get all dirty because that's what they do. Pigs are messy. So, and when you go to a farm and you go over to the pig pen, how does it smell? It doesn't smell so good, does it? No. But have your parents ever called your room a pigsty? Mm -hmm. Do you know what a pigsty is? It is a very messy room because pigs are messy. And, oh, you're such a pig. Why do you have to have such a messy room? Sounds like my house every single day. I went out, walk through the bedrooms like, why is this room such a mess? It's such a pigsty. So, yes. But, you know... Pigs are important. Did you know pigs are important? Pigs are important. Me personally, I like pigs because without pigs, there's no bacon. Or ham. Or ham. Oh, that would be awful. So right now, we're talking about these pigs. And the pigs are important because in our story today, the son who is lost ends up living in the pigsty on a farm with pigs. Would you like to hear what Jack and Gretchen have to say? Do you think Gre Jack and Gretchen have a good story for us today? I think Jack and Gretchen have a great story for us today. So let's see what they have in plan for us as we get ready to hear about the boy who slept with the pigs. I don't think I want to sleep with pigs. Do you want to sleep with pigs? I don't think I'd want to sleep with pigs, but that's okay. All right, let's see. Can you find a, where's Gretchen? This, this, where did she go? I don't know where she is. You're in charge of Gretchen. I'm in charge of Jack. Right. Put your hand here. Thank you. So, oh, there we go. Hey, Gretchen. Yeah, Jack. Where's, where's the kid? The kid? Yeah, you know, the kid. The guy who's been sleeping with the pigs for the last three months. Oh, you mean Charlie. Was that his name? Oh, that's what Sasha told me. Um, did he get fired or something? Oh, no, he quit this morning. Aw, that's a shame. He seemed like a little good guy, maybe a little down on his luck. Very down on his luck. Did you know his father was a millionaire? No. And that his father gave him his full inheritance before he died? Get out of here. And that he squandered it all partying up in the city? No way. Well, I guess that makes sense. How else would he end up here eating and sleeping, you know, with the, the pigs? Yes, this morning he told Sasha, my father's servants live a better life than this. I'm going to go home, beg for forgiveness, and ask him to hire me on as a common servant. Wow. Poor guy. Hey, he made his choices. He admitted it. He is no one to blame but himself. Hmm. I wonder if his dad... We'll forgive him. Oh, I think he will. How do you know? A little bird told me. Ernie? What did he say? Just that he flew over the boy's father's house and saw him sitting on the porch watching for his son. You're kidding. 
One of the father's horses told Ernie that he does it every day. He prays for his son to repent and come home so you can welcome him with open arms. Wow, what an amazing father. Kind of reminds you of another father, huh? You know, you're right. It does sound like God. No matter what sins God people have permitted, God loves them and is willing to forgive them. That's why he sent Jesus to die for their sins. And if they believe, they will have eternal life. What an amazing love. What an amazingly heavenly father. I agree. Thanks. High five. Bye. Wow, that was a great story. I did not realize that the pig's name was Sasha, and I didn't know the prodigal son's name was Charlie. It may or not bother me, but that's okay, because that is a great story. Because if you think about it, so the father, before the boy left, the father gave their inheritance. Now, an inheritance is all the money that parents usually save for their children, and then Sadly, when their parents die, that's what's left for them. It's their estate, so to speak. So this father decided that his son was going to get all the money that he could give him before his father even died. He's like, here's all your money. I want you to have a good life. And I, so the son, instead of being smart with his money and tithing and, and saving and doing good things, he decided to waste it all, partying it up in the city, spending it on, on food and clothes and going out at night and going to the clubs and all of that stuff. And then he went through all of it and he had none left. It was all gone. So the best he could do was go to a farmer and ask him if he could live there and work for the farmer to get to make some money. And the only place the farmer had was him to sleep with the pigs. So he, every day he would work on the farm. And then his house, his home, was in the, the sty with the pigs. And, you know, in the beginning, it probably was like, well, at least I'm making money. And then it got to the point where he was really, really sad. And he realized the mistakes that he had made. Now, those mistakes were nobody else's fault but his own. He made those choices all by himself. So it wasn't his father's fault. It wasn't the people's fault. It was all his fault. And he realized that and knew that he had to ask for forgiveness. So he thought, well, all I can do is go home and beg my father to forgive me. And hopefully he'll at least let me stay on as a hired hand. I don't even deserve to be his son anymore. I just need to have some place to work and try to do better. Well, the cool thing about his father was, is his father loved his son so much. There was nothing he could do that would ever turn his father away from him. So he waited every day, just like Ernie told Jack. He waited every day, or he told, no, he told Gretchen, every day for his son to come home so he could hug him because he missed him and he didn't care what he had done or anything that had gone wrong. He wanted his son to come home. And that is the love that a father has for their son or a mother has for their daughters or parents have for their children. All the love is there. And no matter what you do, the love is always there. Now, parents do get disappointed and they'll be frustrated and parents get angry, but they always love you. And that is exactly what God does for us. God loves us no matter what, no matter what. All the mistakes that we make every single day. And believe me, there are days where the list of my mistakes is a mile long. There are mistakes that I make that I don't even know that are mistakes, but they are. And God forgives every one of them. At the end of the day, I say, Lord, I am sorry for the sins that I have done today. And I ask for your forgiveness. And sometimes I'm like, you know, I know that I did this and I shouldn't have. And I know that I shouldn't have been like this. And I know I need to keep my temper under check. And there's lots of things. And the list goes on and on. And God does not expect us to list everything 
that we do wrong. But what he wants us to do is to own it and ask for forgiveness. And he always forgives us. We just have to ask. So the boy goes home, and what happens is, is as soon as his father sees him, he runs across the field to grab his son and hug him like this and be so happy to see him. Oh, sorry, let me scratch you. And he didn't care what his son has done, and it didn't matter that he didn't have a penny left to his name. He was just so happy that his son came back to him. And that's the same thing with God. God doesn't care about all the mistakes that we made. He's just happy when we talk to him and ask for forgiveness and want to spend time with him. So that to me is the most important lesson that you can remember today is that God always forgives our sins and he always loves us because we know that God loves me, right? We know that that's an easy one. And today we're going to learn a little bit more, but first, so remember this story about the lost son, that even if you feel lost and you've made a hundred million mistakes in one day, God always loves you and he's always with you and will always forgive you. And you can always trust that he is there with you 100% of the time. All right. That's a great, that's a great story. Don't you think, Shannon? I think so. I think it's a great story. I would not want to sleep with pigs. What do you think that was like? You think he cried maybe? I think maybe he had a little few, shed a few tears and thought, what has my life become? I have days like that. Sometimes. All right. So in your packets, you will need, let me find them. Here's your packets. I hope you all saw the answers to the puzzle that we had last week. That was really hard. Oh, Shannon finished it. Good job, Shannon. Now you can write your name on the back. Love, Shannon. Right there. I don't have a marker with me today. No. All right. So if you look, this is the paper for your parents to help you to remind you about what this story is about. And then you have a picture. See, there's the boy. We'll call him Charlie. Sitting with the pigs. And he looks really, really sad, doesn't he? He was really sad. But then when he finally went home, look, there's Charlie hugging his dad. His dad was so happy to see him and glad he was home. So you have some color pictures in there to color. There's a word search, which word searches are always fun. And remember, if you don't know how to do word searches because you can't read yet, that's okay. You can find the letters in your name. So Carol and Ben. You can look for the letters in your name. Elsie's learning how to read, so there might be some words that she's already learned. I know Jeff and Addie are going, Addie's learning how to read too, and Jeff is a great reader, so she should probably be able to do this herself. And Lexi and Alex and Tessa and Billy, you should be able to do this just like that. But there's lots of words. And, and Shannon's motioning for me to give it to her because I think she wants to do the puzzle. But first I have to show them. Then there's another one where you have to figure out where the words go in the missing blocks. I love these. These are my favorite. And then last but certainly not least, there is your, do do the pig for your animal kingdom. Over there. There we go. So we have our snake. Shannon, what story is that from? Good. And then we have the dove from? And then we have the frog from the bullfrog story. The bullfrog story where they were croaking. Mm -hmm. It's one of the plagues, mm -hmm. trying to get the people Israel, Israelites away from the bad people. Pharaoh. <laughs> we're gonna have to revisit that one. Okay, and then we have the quail, and that's from. The quail is from when the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness and they were hungry and God blessed them with quail and manna to have plenty of food to eat. Then we have the fish. Jonah and the big fish when Jonah didn't listen to God and Charlene swallowed him up so he would think straight. Then we have the donkey and that's from... The talking donkey mm -hmm. that had to warn Balaam 
that he was walking into danger and the angel of death was right there and he needed to change his ways and not attack God's people, but pray for them. And the donkey had to talk, remember? And told them, I just protected you and saved you. You need to be nice to me. Then we have the raven that fed Elijah during the drought. Remember, they brought him food in the morning and food at night. The ravens dropped it off for him so he would not starve during the drought. And then we have the lions who the angel came in and shut the mouths of the lions so they would not eat Daniel when Daniel was put in the lion's den for praying to God and not to the king. We have learned so much. Mm -hmm. So, my goodness gracious. So, Shannon has... Oh, I forgot to bring a pushpin. I'll have to get more. Shannon has brought our Sasha pig, and she used pink. It's hard to tell, but she really did already color it. So Sasha will go up on the board, and she is a reminder of the lost son and telling us that no matter what we do or how we behave, we're supposed to do our best. But when we make, when we make mistakes, God always forgives us just like the father forgave his son when he squandered all of his inheritance. Wow, we have done a lot. All right, so then, oh my goodness, have you seen this? In your packet? Is that not the cutest pig ever? Oh, it's so cute. So for this, I have two things for you. Also in your packet, there is a blank sheet of paper. And I thought it would be fun if you decided and drew a picture about where you think the pig was living when you heard the story, okay? So my pig... My pig is living on a farm. That is a horrible barn. I admit that I am not a master artist, and that is okay. But I drew a little, there's a trough, and there's the barn with some hay, and there's a path down to the field. And a, You can't really see my fence. I should have colored it darker. Um, so this is what I drew. So I cut out all of the pieces, and then I saved this picture up here so I knew where all my pieces went. So first I cut out the head and glued on the two ears up in the corner. Beep, 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 beep. It's hard to do this backwards. And then you have the four paws, and the big ones go down here. And then this is the belly, and that goes right there in the middle. And then these two go right on the belly. So when you're all done, it'll look just like this. And I, I just used a glue stick. It was easier because sometimes using a glue bottle, I make a mess. And then I get it all over my hands and it's sticky. But look, it's so cute. This is the cutest little pig I've ever seen. You have to admit, it's really cute. It's cute. What? No? I don't know. Evan said no. So that is our cute little pig. And then you can kind of glue him on wherever you want on your background to give him a home. I thought that was a good idea. He's super cute. I love that. That's a great one. So you have lots of things to do to help remind you. And if you wanted to in here, you could even draw Charlie. Remember, Charlie was the boy. Maybe he could be up here by the by the trough looking sad. Or on the back, maybe you could draw Charlie and his dad coming back together and smiling because he was forgiven. However you want to do it. I try to give you options. Options are important. So you have lots of fun things that you can do during worship because worship's going to start in about 25 minutes and I would hate for you to miss it. So it seems like you probably need to go to the bathroom and get some water, maybe a snack. Snacks are important. Um, worship is really good today. You're going to be very excited. I had a preview of some of the things that uh, Pastor Jared's going to talk about and I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, remember the great invitation. That's what his sermon is going to be about. And you already have an inside scoop of what it's going to be because we already talked about it. So there you go. You're prepared. You'll be able to answer all the questions that Pastor Jared asks before your parents. Have a good time with that. All right. So remember, next Sunday, 10 o'clock here at church. But before we go, we still. <laughs> she always looks at me and I know that I've forgotten something. We have to do our sign language. I... I always forget. always forget, and it is a good thing she's here to help remind me. So today, we are going to learn God forgives our sins. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 
So you know God. I God. Here, 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 put your hand out other way. You're gonna take your hand, you're gonna bend it. Forgives. Like this? Kinda like you're shooting money. Oh, making it rain? Well, your hands. But you gotta make your hand like okay, so God okay. forgives our our you're gonna take your fingers. This is X, by the way. If you want to know that. Oh. Um, you're kind of like scoop. Scoop. That's sins. Because mm -hmm. X is like wrong. Sins. Oh, she's so smart. <laughs> so sins. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Ready? God forgives our our sins. Mm -hmm. One more time again. Okay. God. Is it a C? Yeah. Like this. No. God. God. No, I meant it. Oh, just. God. Like this? Mm -hmm. See, I had it like this. That's all wrong. All right, so half a duck. Like this would be a duck. Stick your thumb out. It's like a goose. <laughs> all right. God forgives our sins. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a hard one. Good job, Shannon. All right, so you are learning all kinds of things that I never knew when I was little. So good job. Thank you, Shannon, for that wonderful lesson. That was wonderful. Maybe I'll make her think of something and she can help me with the children's message next week because there'll be people in front of us and they, you could help me. You mm -hmm. might help me. She said yes. Ooh. She doesn't know she said yes, but she said yes. All right. So remember that God forgives our sins, right? We got it. So we can do that. And no Sunday school next week, but we're going to have a children's message out on the lawn together. So make sure that you are up and dressed and at church by 10 o'clock. Preview of what it should look like. Shannon already finished the word search, so she did a good job. You guys are going to get ready for worship. And enjoy some time listening to Rich sing and listening to some prayers and a really good sermon. Okay? All right. So let's pray and then we will say our goodbyes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for always loving us and always forgiving our sins. Lord, we know that every single day, usually almost all day long, we have a tendency to make the wrong choice, but Lord, we really do try to make the right choice. Thank you for loving us even though we fall short. Thank you for forgiving us and remind us that all we have to do is ask you for forgiveness and we are forgiven because Jesus died on the cross to take all of those sins away. So all we have to do is to believe and receive that into our hearts and be thankful for all that we have and ask for forgiveness when we make our mistakes. Lord, thank you for all that you do for us. Continue to guard, guide, and watch over us every single day. Amen. All right. Good job. That was a great, sir, great message today. Lots of fun times we had today. Invitation, a little piggy named Sasha, and pig for your animal kingdom. Get it hung up. Have lots of fun today. Try to get outside. It's supposed to be beautiful this weekend. Katie and Scott, have a great birthday. And all of you, I will see you hopefully next Sunday. If not, we'll be back for Sunday School Live. It'll already be September. And it'll be September. But we will be back together for Sunday School Live on September 13th. Y'all all have a blessed day. And Shannon and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Just keep waving. <laughs> Just keep waving. <laughs>